A moon is an example of a natural satellite, and a satellite is just something which orbits a planet. Now, orbital motions are caused by a force inwards towards the center of that orbit. So for satellites, that force is caused by gravity. Planets are also satellites themselves. They're a satellite to stars. Moons are satellites to planets. And artificial satellites are ones that we've put into orbit ourselves. So a satellite is always something with a smaller mass orbiting something with a larger mass. Here's two common types of orbits for artificial satellites. We've got the low polar, that's the vertical orbiting around the poles of the Earth, and the higher geostationary orbit. That's when the satellite orbits around the equator. But the important point in this diagram is actually the closer orbit has more force, so actually moves at a higher speed, than the higher orbit, which has less gravity force at that point, and so orbits with a lower speed. Satellites have roughly circular orbits. And this is an important link to the idea of scalars and vectors. So because it's going in a circle, we can say that it's accelerating in a circle, even though it might be going at a constant speed. It's a really important idea. This is because their direction is constantly changing and acceleration is defined as a change in velocity, not just a change in speed over time. Essentially, acceleration is a vector, so direction matters. And there's this really difficult idea that any acceleration must be caused by a resultant force. And so you can see on this diagram there is only one force acting on these objects in their orbit, and that is a force towards the center of that orbit. We call that a centripetal force. A force towards the center of an orbit causes orbital motion, orbiting in a roughly circular path. Many students like to understand this idea of there being a correct speed for a correct height of orbit by using the idea of Newton's cannon. If you think about being up a mountain and actually firing a cannonball straight across, straight horizontally, then that cannonball is going to fall to Earth. If you do it a little bit faster, then it will get a little bit further around the Earth. Okay, but it will still hit the Earth. If, the, if you do it at just the right speed, then it will fall towards Earth at the same rate that Earth falls away from it. So it will end up doing just one perfect loop, and that's number two on this diagram. Number three is when that speed is too great and it will actually spiral out of orbit. So it will just increase in height and height and height until it actually leaves the orbit of the Earth. So if you like, number one is going a bit too slow for that height, and number three is going too fast for that height, but number two is going at just the right speed to mean that it will just stay in orbit around the Earth. And that's what we need to get right when we put satellites in orbit. You don't need to actually know the specific examples of orbits, but your teachers might have used geostationary and low polar orbits uh, for, as examples during teaching. And these are common examples in questions, so they might tell you about this. So it may be worth being familiar with those two types of orbits. Now you don't need to know any particular numbers with these, but you do need to give qualitative responses about speeds of satellites in different orbits. Mm -hmm.